Welcome to another unboxing video where I make old family recipes. Today's recipe is porcupine meatballs, parentheses Moody. I'm assuming Moody is the person who gave this recipe to my grandma because otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I've never made meatballs before. I did some research for this episode just to make sure I would do it correctly and not kill myself because the recipe doesn't say anything about uh, the temperature of the oven. It says to cook slowly for two hours, but I'm thinking like, shouldn't take that long to cook meatballs. So I looked up a couple recipes. What I'm going to do is 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. The oven is heating right now. It might actually even be warm and ready. So let's get started. Uh, I'm a little tired this weekend because I don't know how to go to bed at a reasonable hour. So I have my Jones soda with me to give me some energy and sugar. So let's get started. Mm. Oh, I love sugar. All right, so the first thing that this recipe says to make is the meatballs, which we'll put in this, I almost said bucket, in this bowl. So it's one pound of beef, which I defrosted right here. Oh, come on, there we go. Put that especially off to the side so I know to take extra care of when washing. Did wash my hands before this started. I'm just gonna say that because you gotta take extra precaution with raw meat. And then we have half a pound of ground pork that I also defrosted. Put this off to the side, give my hands a quick wash. Because you can never be too careful and I don't want to kill myself. All right. Next up on the list is a cup of dry rice, which I think is um, like a substitute for the breadcrumbs. A lot of the recipes I looked up had breadcrumbs. So we'll just uh, put that rice in there. And then one chopped onion, which I cut off screen because I thought First of all, people don't need to be seeing my poor chopping skills. And second of all, they don't need to see me cry. So, it says chopped, so there's pretty big pieces that should do the trick. And then, one teaspoon of chili powder. If I can find my teaspoon. Okay, oh, I found the half teaspoon, that's close enough. So I need one of these. The next thing on the list is salt. Um, it just says salt, so I'm assuming the way it's formatted, it means just like a pinch of salt. But I, th I should have looked this up too. I think I'm just going to do a teaspoon. I realize this is half a teaspoon. I'm going to need another one of those. I think I'll just do half a teaspoon of salt just because one of the things I'm trying to do with these recipes is also fill in the gaps. So like if half a teaspoon of salt is too much then i know for the future and i won't put as much in get the lid back on this all right so we're gonna do half a teaspoon of salt is that a lot i don't know because i also don't know how many this will make some recipes were like oh this will make two dozen and some were like yes yeah, it depends on how big you make them all right the next ingredient is one cup of hot milk oh that's that's actually warm um, this is a cup. I measured it out and then heated it up in this glass cup. I don't know if you can see that, but it's steamy. Alright, so now we need to mix and form into balls. I'm going to do a lot of it with a spoon because I want to keep my hands as clean as possible because I am going to need a drink. <laughs> a bit. Let's get a little closer so you can see that. Computer... I always forget about all the technology stuff I should update. Like, I need to make sure my computer is plugged in. It's not right now. I need to make sure that it won't go to sleep. I forgot to update that. So, when I'm editing this, self, when you get to this part, update your computer settings, okay? Thank you. Alright, so I'm actually going to go in with my hands. I should probably get... The pan I'm going to be using, this is a glass 9x13. It's a little, a little something in there. Alright, a glass 9x13. And I don't know how many this is going to make. I think if I make medium sized balls, I could easily, easily fill up this pan. So. 
just gonna go for it. Oh, that is a feeling. These are very goopy. Um, we have now emptied the bowl, um, and we have our meatballs of varying sizes and shapes. That was a lot, a lot runnier than I was expecting, and I don't know if it's supposed to be like that because I've never personally made meatballs. Um, but I also wonder if the the next step would be either different rice or less milk, or maybe not. Mm. Or maybe I defrosted the meat too much. There's like too many factors right now for me to actually know what was going on. But it is good to note, and I will note this down, that it's very sloppy. <laughs> All right, the next part is to make the sauce that goes on top of all of these. So let's get started on that after I clean the counter. Usually I'm a little more like, oh no, it's the counter's dirty, it's fine. But we're dealing with meat here. And like I said earlier, I don't want to end up in the hospital. I don't have the money, I don't have the time. <laughs> So good life down. I'm gonna wash that later. All right. So, in our other bowl, we need to add one can of tomato soup, which is what this is. This is a pretty standard can of tomato soup, so I hope this is the right amount because she did not specify how big of a can of soup. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I forgot it's condensed, so it kind of just blurfed out of the can. That was a wash later. And then we need a cup of milk. So I've got handy dandy measuring. And milk. I think this might be a little, a little less than the cup, but we'll see if that goes. Some left over. All right. And that. I also wonder if it depends on the kind of milk, because I have skim milk just because that's what I grew up on, and it's it's what I have. I actually drink soy milk with semi drink. I usually have soy milk with my cereal anyway. So I wonder if that's also playing a role. A role. Um, the fact that it's maybe a different kind of milk than she had and she just didn't have the options. And then half a teaspoon of chili powder. More chili powder. Right. Um, so I'm going to mix this up and then it says heat before pulling, pouring over the balls. And then we're going to cook for, how long did they say? Uh, I think I'm going to do it for 20 minutes because that might be a little too much, but I'd rather have them a little overdone than not enough. I picked the wrong spoon for this. That's okay. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, okay. Like, it just looks like we need some backlighting. Pale tomato soup. Which is not the worst thing it could look like. I mean, it, it just has to... It's got all three things in it. So I'm going to transfer this to a bowl and pop it in the microwave for... A minute is probably a little long. But a minute at a time until I know if it's too much or too little. And then pour it over. And then we'll add them to the stove. So we're actually almost... The oven. We're actually almost done. Where is my... My microwave safe bowl. The longest part about this was the the prep beforehand, like cutting the onion and getting the meat all defrosted. It just looks like tomato soup. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess it is. It's tomato soup with milk instead of like water. All right. I'm gonna put it in for about. 
minute. That should be more than enough. Really excited about this recipe because it's super simple and it didn't take me that long. Like obviously the prep took me a while, but actually making it and then cooking it is not gonna take that long. So if it tastes good, I'm definitely gonna keep this and try to figure out why they're so runny. Like even now they're kind of oozing a little bit, which doesn't seem right to me, but also like the meat is, is soft and runny and then there's the milk. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, have, like I said, I haven't made meatballs. Didn't do extensive research. I just looked at um, in temperature and how long they did it. So it'll be interesting to see how these turn out. The sauce is done. I don't know how hot that's to be, so I'm going to give it another minute. Well, what I can say is now it smells like tomato soup. So we're going to pour this over these and then cook them. I feel like this is way too easy, but that's all she wrote. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Not only did I get it all over my little pad here, but... Yeah, that's evenly spread. Let's give it a couple. They're just so swimming in the sauce, which is probably what you want so they'll cook. All right, now comes the real test. I'm gonna put them in the oven for 20 minutes. Go do some other things so I'm not, so I can maybe actually start on homework or laundry or vacuuming or any of the other adult things I have to do. But I'll be back in about 20 minutes to give an update and we'll see if they're done or if they need to go back and fill a bit longer. So, see you in a bit. Timer's going off. It's been about 20-ish minutes. So let's pull it from the oven and then test to see if they're done or not. Safety first. <laughs> huh. They're like spiny like porcupines because of the rice of it all right but that's how they look let's see um, if they're done on the inside which according to all the minimal research I did it should not be pink on the inside on any of them so I'm sure I'm sure if one's done they're all done but they're all different sizes, so I'm just just double checking. I just accidentally leaned on the pan, it's okay. So since more than a handful of them are not done, I'm gonna pop them back in the oven for another like five-ish minutes. Yeah, five. I'd rather have them overdone than underdone. All right, so back in the oven they go. Okay, so these are really, really hot still. So I set some off to the side. I'm gonna let them cool for a while. I'll be back once they're cool and then we can do a taste test because I don't want to burn my mouth. That's super unpleasant. So I'll be back in a couple minutes where we can have a grand reveal and a taste test. Well, it has been a while. I got lost in YouTube recommendations. Anyway, so this this is sad, but this is what they look like. So they're definitely like spiky. It's because of the rice. So I think that's why they're called porcupine meatballs. Um, they smell pretty good. They smell like meatballs. They smell pretty generic. But uh, it's been a while. They're cool now. Let's see if I can give this a try. If I can get any. Hmm. That's pretty good. I feel like it's it's a very simple. It's just chili powder and salt. So oh an onion, I guess. This is this is pretty good. I think I can 
I would try this again, but I would add more seasonings to it. Not a lot, because I kind of like how simple they are. But maybe, let's see here, what's in here? Hmm. Maybe a little bit of garlic. Maybe, I don't remember what's in my cupboard, but garlic and then maybe something like, um, I don't know, I like chives on everything. I might add chives, basil, or oregano. I don't really add one of those because that's, that's a bit much for these. And I like I said, I like how straightforward and simple they are. These are pretty good. I'm glad I made them. They're still, they're really crumbly. Um, I wonder if they've not solidified, but they're a little better now because like this one cuts okay, but it still kind of splinters apart. So, this is a pretty good recipe. It's pretty easy to make too. It's just like throw everything together and then cook it for not two hours, for about, I think it was 25 minutes. Yeah, it's really good. Ooh. And I'm, maybe I shouldn't have gotten a fork. I also like coming across the big chunks of onion. That's really nice. Cause I, I really like fresh onion. I don't often have onion in my apartment, but now I got a whole bag because I had to buy some for this recipe. And I had to buy some for other cooking things. Wow, this is really good. Again, I would probably add more seasonings to it cause it is kind of bland. It is just like rice and meat and chili and tomato. Like that's pretty much it. So like a couple more seasonings and maybe adding something to the sauce that would make it a little more notable because it's just kind of like, it's like tomato soup. It's like watered down tomato soup. But other than that, this is a really good recipe. This is a keeper. The, the porcupine meatballs, parentheses moody, is a keeper. So thank you so much for joining in this incoherent tired episode so that last take was just incoherent so let's try again uh this is a really fun recipe to make and i'm really glad i did i got to make something that i don't usually make i got to try new things do a little bit of research on how to cook it turned out great i've got dinner for the next couple days and i think next time i'm just gonna pull something random i'll probably pick like a category and then pick something random from there without looking because this was really fun. It's nice to kind of push myself beyond just desserts and baking. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to not interact with the video and I'll see you next time with another unboxing video. I'm so tired. This is like a train wreck of a video. <laughs>